We started 3D printing tons of car parts, but keep running into one major problem. Free 3D models don't always work. So the solution? Design your own parts. And to make things even easier, we're going to start with a simple design. The spark plug wire separated clips are perfect. It uses two standard shapes, which shouldn't be too difficult to create. But before we start modeling our part, you'll want to get the correct measurements. Caliper measuring tool, digital or not, is perfect. And if you want tons more tips and tricks, don't forget to sign up to our newsletter in the description below. Now we can get the length of the rectangular shape, then the inner circle of the spark plug wire holder, distance between each circle, and then the overall width. Sketching your part along with adding the measurements is going to help out on the next steps. Now there's tons of CAD software programs out there, but we found Shaper 3D to be one of the easiest to pick up and use, especially if you have an iPad along with an Apple Pencil. So the first thing we're going to do is start by creating a new project. And when you open up the project, you can close all of the different menu systems and you'll see that you're in a three dimensional space. Now you can move this three dimensional space by tapping on the screen and just rotating around. There's also a cube at the top where you can reposition everything. And we're actually going to start with the top view because that's where our drawing that we did earlier is really going to help us out. Now, once you have the top view, you can click on the sketch section here. And we're going to start by just creating a simple rectangle and you just select the rectangle and just draw a basic shape. And you don't even really have to worry about the dimensions because you can come in and click and change your dimensions. So here I'm going to type in 51 length, zoom out, and then I'm going to go ahead and unlock that line because I want to be able to change the dimensions of the other lines without affecting that shape. And we'll go to 14 here. You can also select a shape and you can move it around, lock it into position and you can zoom in and zoom out. You can also see your units of measurements. So here we're basically just using millimeters, which is much easier even for us American folks. So now that we have that done, let me show you how easy it is to add the circular clips. So just click on circle, create the circle there, and we can go back to our drawing and look at our diameter. So our diameter for our circle was six millimeters. We can double click to change the shape. Now we can grab it, let's just zoom in a little bit more and about right there. So you can exit the sketch tool and you can copy this or there's another cool feature that you can use which is the pattern. So you can select the pattern little tool there and spread that out and see you can now have three different circles that's basically replicating for the first that you created. Now we ultimately need four. So we just type in four and there you go. And we can change the spacing to the spacing that we measured as well. And then once you're done, you hit just literally done. And now you can see you have your basic shapes. If you select a particular object, like our rectangular shape, it highlights and automatically selects the extrude function here on the left hand side. Now, what's really cool about that is you have these arrows that pop up and you can just drag your shape up. We can change that to the dimensions that we want and we can say go six, however thick we want that part. And just like that, you now have the basic shape for that particular part. We can make this thing look even better though. Let's go ahead and click on all the edges and you can zoom in and zoom out to get your edges. I'm see I'm having a little bit of difficulty here, but you can change your position. And if you just tap, you can untap if you select something that you don't want and then tap on what you do want to click on. And there's a little arrow that displays. We could put some rounded corners in there. That's probably a little bit too round. And again, you can go ahead and type in there. So if you can go 0.5 if you want, that looks a little bit better. I can do the same thing, pull that out. And I think our circles are probably a little bit too high. We can pull the circles down. What we can do is we can go back to another feature that I really like, which is the history. So if you go to the history tool, you can select on different things that you did. And here we have our sketch. And so if we see our sketch, we can actually select the circle and we can move this down and slightly 
readjust. And you can see as we move things down, up or down, everything moves with that. If we exit our sketch, the whole design was updated with that particular change. So we can go and select the export to and select export and export that into an STL, something that our 3D printer can recognize and send it off to the printer. And if you're interested in learning more about 3D printing, we have an entire series you can watch in the video description as well. Wow, I mean, take a look at the results. I mean, that thing came out pretty great. But now that we know the basics on how to make something super simple like this, let's see if we can fix all the problems with that radio delete plate. So the first thing we need to fix is this bulky extrusion by measuring the correct depth of the radio delete insert. Now we measure the overall thickness and the lip for our clip. And instead of creating some flimsy clips, we're gonna have to make something much, much thicker. And we can also add way more clips if needed. Now that we have our measurements, we're gonna go in and create a new project again. We're gonna go into our sketch and we're gonna first draw our shape like we did with the spark plug clip. And now we have pretty much our basic shape that is the radio delete plate. And so we're gonna go into the front view and you can do a simple drawing. So we're gonna do a line that goes up. And now we also took the measurement of the height of that clip. And so we measured that has to be 2.5 millimeters high. Now we have to create some sort of edge or rounded edge or triangular edge in order to be able to snap our part in. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We're actually going to recreate this. We're going to thicken that bottom base. And now we have to make uh, this part come out. So let me show you how to do that. We can make a curve just by moving our pencil in a curved shape. And I think we need it to be a little bit bigger. So let's go back. We can delete that and let's go with a much bigger curve. Maybe something like that. Again, we wanna keep the thickness of the part. So we're going to go back to our line tool and we can select here. Oop, that's not what we wanna do. We don't wanna move it. We actually wanna draw a line. There we go. Keep it at 1.5 millimeter thick at the top. And then as we go down to the base, we're gonna make it even thicker. Let's do a swoop. Now we have a really thick bottom and that's gonna be plenty thick enough to be able to snap in without breaking. And then what we need to do is we need to finish off our bottom line. And there you go. We can exit our sketch and we can select that part and we can again extrude it. You want that clip to be nice and beefy. So maybe we'll go 20. Shaper 3D makes it really easy. You can select that clip and you can copy it and we can create another clip. And then we can zoom out, we can move that clip. Oh. I forgot to hit uncopy. So we copied there. Now you can move your copy. So I uh, deleted that third copy. And then now you can basically move your clip to the other side of the radio to delete plate. We can go to the top. Oh, let's go to the top. We can zoom in. We have that two millimeter offset in order for that clip to set. But before we do that, we need to rotate this. And so you can simply just drag the rotation around. And now the ha you have your clip in the appropriate orientation. We're about one, two, three millimeters away. So we actually need to be two millimeters away and we can move it into the appropriate position. And we can go back, double click, and again, you see the arrow to move there and we could put that in the appropriate position as well. One really cool thing you can do, select the, the main base of the radio delete plate and you can go into more. We can create an offset. And now we can say, let's do a two millimeter offset and we can select that offset. And now we can go down into our part here. We don't wanna remove everything, but we wanna at least keep some portion of that initial base. We need to also put a round curve around the insert because the, it's not a rectangular shape. Let me show you. We have a little bit of a round curve right there. So in order to make that curve, we go back and we use this in our last part. We can select each of these four corners. 
we can go ahead and pull. Remember the push and pull method? We now can give our part a nice rounded edge. And once exported as an STL, the model gets loaded into our 3D printing software. Now all we have to do is select our UV resistant ASA filament and give the part a print. So the radial delete plate looks and fits perfect, but I think we could make it even better. What we want to do is add a couple of switches into this. You can create again a rectangular shape and we'll go, let's just say 30. Yeah, let's go with something very simple. Once you do that, rotate around. We want to grab that there. We're going to go ahead and use our tool to punch a hole. Now you're probably wondering, well, wait a minute. What if I want to do a bunch of different switches that are all the same size? Let's start over again. So let's just say we want to create more than one. We go back into our sketch. We create our shape. Maybe we want to move our shape to the appropriate place. And now we can do our pattern tool again. We can change this to quantity of four. And now let's go to the bottom. Now you can see multiple shapes for all of your different switches. We actually didn't do that quite right. So we want to change the spacing of, of those. And so what you can do is you can, you know, go back, select, go more pattern. We can, let's add, let's see if we can add five, maybe five switches. Now you have five of those. You can select all of them extrude through your part with a bunch of pre cutouts. So we're going to go ahead and add a few more clips, export this and send it off to the 3D printer. And here's our part. We actually added a couple more clips and here you can actually get a pretty good picture on how our little clip came out. Now let's see how everything fits. Not too bad. So let's see how one of the switches fit into our pre-cut hole. So the part came out pretty well, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you use the right filament if you decide to 3D print this part yourself. Now, this part is printed with UV resistant filament that can handle up to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you wanna learn to print filament like this ASA, watch this next video here.